hello and welcome to uh, my channel and I'm going to read a lovely story today it's from the dawn shops and it's written by Joyce Lancaster Breezley who for anybody who knows Millie Molly Mandy she's the same author so I hope you enjoy it the story is called Susan the Smut Once upon a time, there was a little girl named Susan Smut. She had a father and a mother and 15 brothers and sisters. So you see, they needed a big fairy house to live in. But even so, it wasn't very easy to find room enough for them all. Mr. and Mrs. Smut slept in the front bedroom and Annie and Fanny and Polly and Dolly Smut slept in the back bedroom. And Willie and Billy and Dickie and Mickey Smut slept in the top front bedroom and Tilly and Lily and Sammy and Hammy Smut slept in the top back bedroom and the twins Cora and Dora Smut slept in the attic and little Angelina Smut had a bed made up in the bath as there wasn't much another bedroom in the house. So when Susan Smut began to get too big to sleep in the bottom drawer in her father's and mother's room any longer the family wondered very much where they could put her. They looked all over the house, starting at the top and going right down to the bottom. But there wasn't any room, not even in the cupboard. And then, just as they were passing the little door leading into the coal cellar, Susan Smut called out in her shrill little voice, Ooh, wouldn't it be nice to have a little bedroom in the coal cellar? So, as they couldn't think where else to put her, Mr. and Mrs. Smut and all the little Smuts carried the coal in a big box into the scullery. And then they cleaned out the coal cellar with brooms and mops and pails of water. And then they put in a little bed made out of wooden boxes and a little chest of drawers made out of wooden boxes and a little chair made out of wooden boxes and a little round red rag rug. And every night after that, as soon as the clock struck seven, Susan Smut said goodnight to her father and mother and 15 brothers and sisters took up her little nightlight and skipped downstairs to the coal cellar to bed. Susan Smut thought her little bedroom was the greatest fun in the world. There was a little round hole in the ceiling with an iron lid over it where the men who go round shouting, Coal! would pour a sackful down into the coal cellar if asked, but they weren't. The lid was right in the middle of the pavement, where you must have often seen it on your outings. And when Susan Smut was in bed, she could hear people walking over it, never thinking that they were walking on little Susan Smut's bedroom window shutter. Sometimes Susan Smut would put her little chair on the bed and stand on it and push up the lid very cautiously and peep out. And if no one were about, she could, being very small, pop right out and skip up and down on the pavement in the moonlight till she heard someone's footsteps came tramp, tramp, tramping along. Then she would pop back to the bed and shut the lid before they saw her. In the mornings, she could either walk out through her little door to join the family at breakfast, or she could climb up through the coal hole and be taken in at the front door with the milk. It was great fun. One morning, Susan Smut was up and out very early, or perhaps the rest of the family was down late. Anyhow, she had to wait about on the doorstep to be let in. Presently, there came along the road a coal cart with a big horse walking clip-clop, clip-clop, and a big coalman calling, Coal! Any coal? When it came opposite the next door house, the next door door opened, and the next door lady popped her head out and said, just put a tonne of coal through the coal hole tomorrow morning, will you? And the coalman said, Yes, ma'am, tomorrow morning, ma'am. And the next door lady nodded pleasantly to Susan Smut and popped her head in again and shut the next door door. When Mrs Smut opened their door to take in the milk, Susan Smut walked in saying, Good morning, mother. I am going to watch the coalman drop a tonne of coal through the next door coal hole tomorrow morning. Won't that be fun? The very next morning, Susan Smut woke up to hear a click-clock, click-clock coming along the road. 
Oh, she said to herself, here's the coalman coming to put the coal down the next door coal hole. I must hurry. And she hopped out of bed and pulled on her red woolen stockings. The coalman shouted, whoa, and the coal cart stopped outside. Susan Smut hurried into her clothes as fast as she could because she did want to see the coal poured into the next door coal hole. And then suddenly, what do you think? The coalman took the lid off her coal hole and started pouring a sack full of coal down onto her little chest of drawers and chair. Bang, bang, rattle. Stop, cried Susan Smut in her shrill little voice. This is the wrong coal hole. But the coalman was making such a noise he couldn't hear her and he poured another sack full of coal down onto her little bed and red round rag rug, rattle, rattle, rattle. <gasps> stop, stop, cried Susan Schmutt, scrambling into her petticoat and rubbing the dust from her eyes. But the coalman only began to pour another sack full of coal down through the coal hole. Crash, crash, clatter. So Susan Schmutt snatched up her red wooden frock from under a heap of coals and fled out of her little door along the passage and up the stairs shouting father mother at the top of her voice all the way well father and mother and 15 brothers and sisters all came running out of their rooms as if they thought the house was on fire and when they heard what was the matter they all went outside and were very cross with the coalman for making such a mistake and the next door lady came out and was very cross with the coalman too. And the poor coalman said he was very sorry. He was quite sure that the coal holes were so close together, he quite thought he had got the right one. Then Mr. and Mrs. Smut said, well, as they'd got the coal, they'd better keep it now as it would make such a mess to take it all out again. And the next door lady said to the coalman, well, just bring me another ton tomorrow. And little Susan Smut wept a little tear down each smutty little cheek because now she hadn't got a bed to sleep in. Then the next door lady said very kindly, don't cry Susan Smut. I've got a nice little bedroom in the attic which I never use. You can have that and your father shall make a little door through the wall into your house so that you can reach it from your side. So now little Susan Smut had a nice sunny little attic bedroom all to herself, just next door to the twins Cora and Dora Smut's room. And every morning she gets up early and before she has breakfast in her own house, she creeps downstairs into the next door house and sweeps the kitchen and makes the fire and gets the breakfast ready for the next door lady, just to show how very grateful she is for her nice new little attic bedroom. Thank you.